think about your group going forward into this season? Go ahead, Ron. Who you want, Ron? Go ahead, Ron. Talk about yeah, Ron. RC. Um, I, I think I think that Sanders um, is a welcome addition. Um, he's a veteran. He's played in some big games. Played in the Super Bowl last year. One of the Ted Ginn's best attributes was his leadership in that room. Um, with him being gone, departing, then I think he can come in and you know, fill those shoes, man. But he's a he's a special talent. He's a unique talent. Um, I think him and Drew's going to hit it off. And obviously, we have Mike Thomas and you know the odd um, little shorty. We call him Shorty B. Harris. Um, looking forward to the growth of those guys, you know, going forward. So, you know, we have a, we have a great room. Some hard workers, um, guys that are coachable. Um, man, guys that you know they're football junkies, man. They they take their job serious, and you know, just a pleasure to coach them every day. You know, RC, how do you how do you see you guys going forward? You, you mentioned Deontay. How do you how do you see going forward integrating him more to the offense and what you do? Um, you know, last year, you know, he would come in. He had a certain role. You know, we like to bring the young guys along slow, um, put them at one position, um, bring them in, and you know, kind of back Ted again up, doing some reverses and things of that nature. Um, but just getting to know him a little bit better. He missed a lot of uh, training camp time with the hamstring. So, you know, it was slow for him to get going. But, um, and it's hard that we didn't have an off season this, this past off season. So it's kind of hard to, to say how much he's grown. But, you know, I'm pretty sure he's somewhere putting in work, you know, talk to him every now and then. And um, we're just seeing what he can handle. You know, he can come in and, his role will expand if, you know, if you've been in our offense or been around the, this team and you know that, you know, guys fall into a role and, you know, we have, you know, 30 days to kind of figure out, you know, what his role will be. Yeah, RC, I'm going to throw one more at you before we get to CJ here, but, you know, you, you play quarterback, obviously you just went to the uh, quarterback summit for the second year in a row. How much does that help you in teaching when, when you go to come back and, and you want to teach your receivers? Um, I mean, you, you like, you know, like you said, I play quarterback, so um, I never stopped learning the game as a quarterback. And I think that's something that's helped me as a coach and as a player when I move to the position of receiver. You know, I, I can learn all the positions. I can line up and, and read the coverage and know exactly where the ball was supposed to go. Um, and I try to teach the guys the same way. Don't, don't just learn your position, you know, you know, learn coverages, learn, you know, the technique of defenders. Um, and, you know, when you go to, to things like that with the quarterback, you just – you hear the perspective of a lot of other different coaches and how they go about their business every day. And, you know, this is the second system I've been in, you know, one with the Niners and one here to where, you know, you know it's a lot of production in both offense, offenses, but they're done, you know, totally different, you know, two, two totally different styles. And when you go to these things, man, you notice that, you know, it's a lot of system. There's a lot of learning. There's a lot of things that go on. And I, you know, I consider myself a young coach. So, you know, I sit there, you know, mouth closed, ears open, and then just take it in and then bring back the things that, you know, that I've learned there and try to implement it here. And some of the stuff works, some of it don't. You know, this system has been been around for, you know, 13, 14 years, and it's been highly productive and is always evolving. And anything I could bring to the table that I've learned somewhere else, I try to do Hey, CJ, uh, for you, how significant has it been the adjustment um, not seeing the players and not really having an off-season program this year? Well, I think one thing Sean and Mickey, Jeff Allen, and uh, Jerry Fondo do, do every year, they go out and they get the smartest guys you can. And RC is being minus. He's done a fa fantastic job in off-season. You know, he, he and DJ just getting those guys together, getting them the meetings, getting them on time, getting the offense taught. And I think we're going to be ahead of the game. We have a better quarterback. We got a better unit. So, you know, I think it's significant. But think about 2011. We didn't even have those meetings. And I think our offense finished one in a, in a league. Hey, Coach CJ, I was wondering, uh, what do you think some of the next steps are for Michael Thomas, you know, coming off of a record-breaking year like that? Well, I, he better break some more records. That's what he better be doing. <laughs> Look, I think Michael Thomas is a student of the game. He loves football. He's a ball I'm, I'm, I'm grassroots all the way. <laughs> and so it does, and I believe in it heavily. Well, um, I, don't, I don't get that, but go ahead. But, 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 well, but Michael Thomas is a football guy. He's a football junkie. He loves football. He's a smart guy. 
tough. I wish he'd block a little bit better. You know, we can we can put that in there. Let's throw that in. But last year, man, he really stepped up. He played everywhere. He did everything we asked him, asked him to do. And, uh, you know, he can also improve on catching every ball instead of dropping like one or two. Uh, one of the things we got to talk to him a couple of weeks ago, and one of the things he mentioned, he doesn't want to let us in on what his uh, – you know, individual workouts are? How much does he let y'all in? And how much, you know, do y'all kind of work off of that? Well, he's going by my guy, Andrew Swayze. You know, him, uh, Alvin, uh, there by Swayze. So, so I, I'm in on it. Me and RC in on everything. He'll call us. He's like our little, our, our third son. You know, he, he's calling us all the time, bugging us about a lot of stuff. But but we know, and he's going to be big. He's Mike, we never worry about Mike. Always going to be in great condition. He's going to catch the ball. He's going to make plays. I mean, and he loves football, and, and he's a good person. And have y'all seen him grow uh, in sort of a leadership role? I know we all saw the, the reports of him organizing that video um, that, you know, really sparked the NFL to, to kind of change things. Have y'all seen that uh, as an area he's developed? Exactly. Tremendous growth. Tremendous. When I first saw him, he, you know, me and him had an experience at the Combine when I was at the Bears, and he didn't like me very much. But I've seen him, his personality come out more and more. He's a leader by example. You know, he does he does some things that 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 I still don't like, but but that's okay. But this guy, he is a tremendous leader. He's always out there. He's always first in line. He want to show everybody he's the best. And uh, you know, I, I love coaching. I mean, he's just a great guy to coach. Uh, either RC or CJ, which whichever one of y'all want to take this. Uh, Dan Campbell brought up Traquan the other day. Um, I know he's, he's, he had the injury slow him last year. What are you guys kind of hoping to see out of him uh, in 2020? What, what, what sort of next steps do you want to see? RC, go ahead, because he's my favorite. <laughs> nah, um, I love Traquan, man. I, you know, uh, I love him coming out, you know, spend a lot of time uh, watching film on him before we decided to draft him. Um, he's a unique player. You know, for us, as I talked earlier, like everybody falls into a role. I mean, Trey Quan, you know, he got skinny legs and skinny arms, but he's stronger than you think. Um, he's smart. Um, he knows the game of football. It means something to him. Um, he puts in the work. And, he, you know, he just needs to continue to play football, um, continue to get opportunities, um, fix his stance. I think once he fixes his stance and be a little bit more explosive, he'll be all right. We joke about that all the time. But... I mean, he's a, he's a special player, man. He just needs some opportunities. You know, a lot of guys, you know, I mean, a lot of people give us, you know, slack about needing guys because Mike Thomas get all the balls. But Mike Thomas is a healthy player. And Trey Quan kind of gets slighted, you know, and when it comes to that, it's not that we don't have a good guy on the other side. It's just that, you know, Mike Thomas get a lot of the passes. And, um, you know, and he, he takes it. You know, coach gets on him sometimes. He's, you can coach him hard. Um, I just think he just needs to continue to show up. I mean, when the opportunity is there, we saw it last year, and the year you know, that he, the, the game when Drew breaks the record, you know, he catches a couple passes. Um, but when, when the opportunity has presented itself, man, he's, he's, he's slipped, he stepped up to the occasion, man, and he just needs more opportunity. So, in my opinion. Another guy. Yeah. Another guy that was brought in, and either one of y'all can tackle this, Ty Montgomery. He's technically listed as a red, uh, as a running back, not a wide receiver. But what do you see with a guy like that who has played multiple positions back there and can do a lot of different things? I, I think um, he's just another weapon. He's another weapon that we're going to use. Sean's going to use him to the best of our ability. He can play multiple positions. He'll be great for our roster. You know, we've, we've looked at some of the things that he's done in the past at Green Bay and other places. And I think this guy is just an added addition to what we're doing. And as many weapons as we can get to put in front of our quarterback, you know, I just I just love the addition. I wanted to ask you guys about uh, Emmanuel Butler, guy who really, you know, jumped off the page to all of us at uh, last training camp. Uh, where do you guys see him growing and, and where do you see him in his development? Well, I mean, he, he's another young guy. I mean, we got a couple of them. Um, you know, him and LJ, you know, Austin Carr, um, guys we just, just picked up in the draft where he's going to have to compete. You know, I think with him is he just has to have a little bit more growth on special teams. Um, we saw him in training camp make a lot of plays, but then he, 
you know, he suffered an injury that really set him back some. And, it, you know, it just it happened to when preseason was about to start. And it would have been great to see him continue to grow. Um, the good thing about him is, you know, he was able to play you know, the position that Mike plays. So, you know, when we try to save Mike, he got a lot of opportunities that were probably went to Mike. And now that he's in the second year of this offense, we're looking for him to, you know, play some other positions to give himself a better chance on him really making the team. Um, but he's a great kid, man. He, he works. He loves to work. I mean, we had just had a great bunch. I mean, you, you hear us talk about one, you, we really talk about them all. And um, But I think, you know, he just needs to, you know, grow, grow a little bit on special teams and, you know, just continue what he's been doing and build on top of that. And he's, he's out in Arizona working on that stuff now that we need him to to do to help us out next year. CJ, can you talk about how your uh, preparation has changed, uh, if at all, leading into training camp this year as opposed to, to past years? Well, now I think this, I think, like like I said before, we got a, Nash, a, a, a definitely a, a veteran group. The one guy we got to get to, Emmanuel Sanders, you know, we got to get him going a little bit. I think he's a smart guy. You know, I, I, I probably talk to him probably more than anyone. Uh, I know he likes to play a lot of golf, but that's about it. That's all I know about him. That's a joke. But he's a tremendous on film. We were talking the other day, myself, RC, and Pete Carmichael, putting plays together in for him, you know, to use his strengths, you know, you know, doing some different things with Trey Quan also. We talked about, you know, Trey Quan's a guy that he's a tremendous blocker. He's always leading us to the ball. We got to get him somewhere else and put him in some different positions. And one thing about those guys, again, they're very, very smart guys. I think we can put more on them. You know, we put more responsibility on guys like Trey Quan and Emmanuel and, and L.J. Humphrey. So, so you know, when those guys come along, I think Deontay is going, like R.C. said, he's going to do a, fa a phenomenal job. R.C., when you're working with a guy like C.J., who's, who's, you know, a fairly, you know, dominant personality, how's the, the dynamic of that relationship? Oh, man, it's, it's great. I mean, C.J. has a – a great personality. I mean, he keeps the room light. You know, he jokes. You know, he he's just a he's just a veteran. I mean, he he lets me go about my business the way I need to go about my business. He encourages. He he develops not only players but coaches and human beings. Man, like you know, he's he's probably one of the better best coaches that I've been around. It's all around as far as coaching. And, you know, that's that's the good thing about him. There's a lot of coaches you're going to be around, especially when you're young. It's like they try to keep you in your place and then only allow you to grow at, the, at their rate. And CJ's not like that, you know. And, you know, he treats you like one of his own. His house is always open. You know, he, he just, you know, he's loud when he comes in the room. But, you know, he he's, you know, he, he's always, you know, preaching knowledge, man. And from me to, to the last coach on the staff or to, the, to Sean Payton, Mickey, to – to you know, just just everybody, man. He's he's a he's a likable guy to be around, man. You can't always say that in this profession, but you know he's one of the best ones you're gonna be around. Yeah, RC, we've heard a lot of a uh, lot of y'all as coaches and the staff talk about visions for players. Um, so, what is y'all's vision for for Sanders? Like, how, how do you see him fitting into this offense? I mean, we gonna we gonna do it. We're going to try to put together what he does best, man. It's, that's the, the beauty about this system and the reason nobody has caught up to it yet is, man, Sean Payton knows how to move guys around and he knows how to take advantage of, you know, their unique talents. And he try to put these guys in positions to where, you know, you keep them out of the things they can't really do well and, you know, you enhance the stuff that they can. So it's hard, you know, it's hard to say, you know exactly what you want to do for Sanders and his vision, and until you really get your hands on him, um, you saw some of the stuff he did in San Fran last year. But our offense is kind of different from San Fran. Um, kind of got to go back to his Denver days when he was playing with um, Peyton. Um, so, you know, he's a transition player. You want to get the ball in his hands. You want to. You got a vision for him on third down, winner one on one matchups in the red zone. You feel like he's going to fit right like Ted Ginn, like a veteran that's going to be where he's supposed to be on time for Drew. And, you know, Drew's a, you know, he's a, he's a person that he needs a lot of work with. It doesn't matter who it is that comes in here. He likes to, you know, find ways to work with guys and seeing their body language and how they get in and out of routes. So, you know, we have a vision for him you know, on third down and how we can use him, you know, maybe taking some, some of that option and stuff off of um, AK's plate. 
And, you know, and some of the stuff that Ted Ginn was doing, double moves, sitting down, you know, transitional stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of stuff in his offense, man. It's the offense that I'm going, you know, trying to get him the ball. But we got to see what he can handle first, too. Uh, one guy we haven't talked about yet, uh, Krishan Hogan, uh, came in midway through the year last year. Uh, you know, how is he developing? And, again, same question. What's the vision for him moving forward? Get out of CJ. Go ahead, buddy. Yeah, Krishan's another good player that's, that's in the mix. You know, we like his, his intelligence. Very, very intelligent guy. He can line up at a variety of different positions. Uh, he's a tremendous blocker. You know, he can't separate. So that's another guy that, that we're going to look at to increase his role in the, in the, in the fall. And also, we know he's, he's, you know, hopefully he's not injured. He was injured at the end of the season last year. And, you know, put, that he's protecting his body and doing those things. But he's another guy that's definitely in the mix that, that's going to help us this year. He takes it. Hey, CJ, going back to, to Traquan, just the, the injuries that he dealt with last year, did, do, you, do you think that played a role in, in – you know, obviously he missed a game, so he's not going to produce as much in those games where he's missing. But as far as just uh, you know, the production people were looking for out of him? Yeah, you know what? The one thing about Traquan I could say is that, that we, we haven't used him to do he, – he, he's a catch-and-run type guy also. You know, the, the, the play that he made in, in Los Angeles with, that he got hurt on, he caught the ball, man. He run, broke two, three tackles. And then a guy got his ankle. Any setback for a young player, you know, second or third year, it's going to be a, a setback for him, a major setback. Now, the one thing I would say about Traquan also, we took him from an outside receiver and, have, and we moved him to an inside receiver by necessity. And he's been outstanding doing those things. We just got to continue to work with him on, you know, some of the things that he never done in, in, in college. And he didn't do very much of it the first year that he was here. But I think his improvement is going to be drastic and, and he's going to be a but really, he's going to go break out season. I'll, I'll, I'll be write that down. Hey, Coach CJ, you, you mentioned earlier uh, having a, a, a moment with Mike at the combine. Uh, is that something you can elaborate on? Yeah, well, well, I was in Chicago, and Ryan Pace told me, look, we want to get to this guy. We want to see what he's really about. You know, they heard some rumors at Ohio State he was good or bad or whatever, but it was – and so before the interview, we were out talking, just kind of talking. You know, I do, I kind of baited him in. And when I got in the interview, I drilled him. And so when he found out that I was going to be coaching on the same staff, he almost had a second child. <laughs> Twins. <laughs> but, uh, but me and Michael, we good now. We very, very good. He just bought my wife a great birthday present. So I, gotta, I just got to say, Mike's my favorite right now, today. <laughs> Jay, where does Mike stack up against, uh, you know, some of the great receivers you've coached in your day, um, you know, just from a, a standpoint as far as talent, pure talent? Well, well, well look, he's as big as Andre Johnson and Yatil Green, probably two of the biggest guys. He has hands like Reggie Wayne. You know, he can separate like Santana Moss. I mean, he's right there with all of Coaston. He can do back, back shoulder catches like Coaston. He's not as fast as Debbie or Meacham, so I'm not going to give him that much. But, I mean, he is up there with the top. I've never seen a big guy as courageous as he, as he is and can separate like he does. Coaster was courageous also. But this guy can separate in small areas like no one else I've ever seen do it. So he's one of the top guys. And, and for, for either of y'all, is uh, you know, whatever, whatever limitations Deontay is working with because of his size, does, does that have to – do you have to come up with a, a specific type of like package for him, or, or do you think he can he can kind of do it all regardless of being five six or whatever? Go ahead, RC. Take this one. I know you like this one because you always make the plays. <laughs> nah, uh, no, I don't, I don't see his size as a limitation. I feel like he had a package one because he was a young player, um, and we had a vision for him to basically be the player that he was last year as far as a returner a top returner in the league. Um, we knew that would be his role. And then he played behind Ted Ginn and Trey Quan Smith and, you know, Mike Thomas. So um, he had a limited role because he was up on game day as a returner, and we just got him going on, on offense, you know, when we could. Um, we knew we, he, he came in with hamstring problems, so, you know, we protected him as much as we could. So um, going forward, you know, his, his role will grow just because he's been here for a year. And he's going to be able to compete and um, 
you know, kind of the same, same situation as far as, you know, the receiver numbers that are back. But, you know, he's a special talent, man. And, you know, guys of his stature has, has had great success in his league. And I don't see that as a limitation. It's something that, you know, sometimes you're not going to be able to find him in the middle, you know, just because Drew's height and his height, you know, it's a combination of both. Is, uh, is like that, that big catch he had in the, the wild card game against – Minnesota kind of like a, an example of that. I, I mean, he was you know running a deep route. <laughs> I think it, like a deep. Yeah, I mean, it's he he an example of just like the the Traquan question, you know, about his production. It's it's not because the player can't play. It's more because you know when you when you drawing up the offense, you know you gonna you gonna first you gonna think about Mike, and then you probably gonna think about Cooks, and then you gonna think about AK. So by the time you get to these guys, you know it's kind of like basketball, you know. You're going to think about LeBron, LeBron, LeBron until he has to, you know, kick it to the corner, you know, for somebody else to shoot. You know I mean? You don't draw those plays up for those guys. The ball just finds them. And that's just the way our offense. A lot of the, a lot of the plays are not drawn up for Traquan and, you know, Shorty B. But, you know, eventually they, they double-team Mike, double-team Mike and Cooks, and then somebody else got to step up, and then the ball finds them. So um, that was basically that play – was for him, you know, it was a kill for Taysom to take a shot and, you know, Taysom threw a hell of a ball and he made a hell of a catch. And that was your play. Yeah, I mean, it was one of them. <laughs> I'm giving you some, you got to get the credit for that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are your thoughts about Marquez Callaway? Love him. Look, Marquez was a, was a guy who, who uh, was coached by one of my guys at Tulane, David Johnson. And uh, I think he's a heck of a player, good kid, come from a great family. Uh, Dave, you've been telling me about Marquez years. He's big, he's fast, he's, 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 he's tough, he's a tough kid, very, very smart. You know, I like him. I just, sometimes I'm going to get on him about his haircut because I see that haircut and it's just, I can't, I can't, I can't grow hair like him. So I'm, I'm not. <laughs> well, for the follically challenged guys like myself there, Coach, uh, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, what about Jawan Johnson? How do you see him fitting in with you guys? I like him also. My nephew had him at Penn State. He's a special team guy. He's a very tough guy, big, physical, athletic. You can't get enough of these guys in a season like this. We like big guys, like R.C. always said, like big guys because, you know, because of Drew's situation, a little bit shorter than everybody else. But this guy's made some plays at Oregon, you know, these, and these guys are tremendously smart. I'm telling you, DJ and RC did a phenomenal job with those kids this year. I, I, I can't wait to, you know, to be a part of it. 